You should always get the most out of what you use, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Special thanks to our friends over at Nerdio for sponsoring this video and how it's going to help you reduce the cost of Azure Virtual Desktop. So if there's another Nerdio feature that you want me to cover or something else that you want me to review, just comment down below and let me know. Now, did you know that it's possible to save up to 75% of the storage costs for your session host operating system disks? This is just another feature of Nerdio's auto scale, which you can find when you go to your host pools, then click that manage host button drop down, go to auto scale and click configure. And you'll see a setting over here called stopped disk type. Now, when an Azure VM is deallocated, you don't pay for the compute cost at all, but you're always paying for the storage. Now, using a premium SSD for your pooled session host is a great idea while the VM is running because multiple users will be logging in and that causes higher levels of IOPS and throughput. And premium can provide for all of those needs. But when the VM is turned off, you're just wasting money with a premium SSD. And this feature is going to change the disk type to a less expensive tier. Now, according to the Azure price calculator, a standard 128 gig premium SSD in the East US costs roughly $20 a month, where the hard drive cost is $6 a month on average, and that's a savings of about 70%. Now, this won't have a negative impact in your VMs at all because they're powered off. We aren't changing the size of the VMs or the VM disk, just the type of disk that it is. So that way you can save even more when the VM is not running. When the VM needs to be powered back on, Nerdio will change the disk back to its original type and you're good to go. Now, have you ever heard of a reserved instance? This is where you can commit to either one year or three years for any number of virtual machines that you want to provision. And the idea here is that since these VMs will be running the whole time, you want to get as big of a discount as you can. And the longer you make the reserved instance for, the more savings you get. Now, reserved instances aren't necessarily good for every VM because you can save more money by having the VMs not run at all through the auto scale features. But there's usually some amount of VMs in your host pools that you need really to run 24 seven so that users always have something that they can log into. And it never hurts to save as much as you can. Like how about 72% worth compared to the pay as you go pricing? So saving money makes all the sense in the world, but how do you know how many reserved instances you should get? Well, in Nerdio Manager, when you click the drop down next to your host pool, you go to auto scale, you'll see right there, RI Analytics. This will look at the auto scale history of your host pool and give you recommendations to help guide you. Just select the time frame over here at the top. Then in the middle, you'll see the total number of CPU hours the hosts in the pool have consumed. That number is divided by the average number of hours in a month, which is 730 hours, and you get the projected CPU months. Now at the bottom here is the data that you'll need to get your reserved instances, including the region, VM size, and the total number of cores that you should reserve. And that way you can get the biggest discount possible for those VMs that you need running 24 seven. Azure managed disks are the best way to provide storage for your virtual machines. And each managed disk has a type like hard drive, standard SSD, premium SSD, or even ultra SSD. And they all have a size ranging from four gigabytes up to 32 terabytes. And your type and size together combine to give you your level of IOPS and throughput, which is your overall performance. And sometimes you need a lot of storage capacity, while other times you just need a lot of speed. And all together, this makes up the cost of your Azure managed disk. Now the standard Microsoft image that's available in the marketplace is 128 gigabytes. And that'll give you 500 IOPS and 100 megabytes per second of throughput. Once you deploy your VM from your image, there will be a constant cost of about $20 a month. Now inside Windows, you'll also notice that there's a whole lot of blank space on that C drive. Now this is generally good because you can fill up that disk with all the applications and whatever else you need, but you can also change the size of the disk if you need to. So it makes sense to have the smallest disk possible that'll still give you the best performance to hit the user density numbers you're looking for. Also, shrinking the OS disk will allow you to leverage some of the advanced features like ephemeral disk, which I'll link to a video at the end here. 
And the biggest benefit of ephemeral disk is you don't pay for the storage at all. So if your VMs are off, you're effectively paying zero. Now in Nerdio Manager, let's look over there on the left at the scripted actions and then click on the Azure Runbooks. Now there's a lot in here, so in the filter, go ahead and search for Shrink OS Disk. Now by default, this is going to shrink the OS disk down to 64 gigabytes. But if you need something different than that, you can just go ahead and set that in the code. Once you have the code set the way you want, on the left, go check out your desktop images. Then click the drop down for your image and select Run Script. Search for the Shrink OS Disk, and in a few minutes, your image is gonna shrink down to that size. Storing an image at a smaller size also reduces cost of your images. And we're not quite done yet, so once that's complete, the button will change to say Set as Image. This is going to sysprep and seal that image and prepare it for deployment for your host pools, and depending on your sizes and what VM size you're using, you could even leverage those ephemeral disks and basically eliminate your storage cost. And you don't have to stop there. Using that same scripted action, you can shrink the disk on existing session hosts. Now keep in mind that your performance is tied to your disk type and your size. So just keep this idea balanced with your user density targets because it'd be a shame to shrink your disks and then have to build more VMs, which would effectively cost more money. All right, these next two go together and this is gonna be a pretty big topic, so stick with me. We wanna talk about how we can auto scale your FSLogix user profile shares on Azure files and Azure NetApp files. Now just to review, we have three things that we need to think about for FSLogix, and that is capacity, logon performance, and steady state performance. Now when each user logs in, their FSLogix profile is going to consume approximately 50 IOPS. Then after the logon process is done, you have reached the steady state, and you'll need approximately 10 IOPS per user. And just like with your VM disks, the performance and cost of FSLogix file shares are directly tied to their capacity. And you can also use this to your advantage. Once you have a NetApp instance deployed, back in Nerdio Manager over on the left, go to Storage and then Azure NetApp Files. Go ahead and click the dropdown under Auto Scale and select Configure. Now since performance is directly tied to the size of your volumes, we can use this to our advantage in two ways. First is during the logon storm in the mornings to get better performance, and then after the storm to dramatically reduce cost. Now the first thing over here are our modes. You have two options, volume or volume and capacity. Now since it's your capacity that determines your cost and the volume determines your performance, we're gonna choose volume and capacity to get the benefits of both at the same time. The other cool thing here is that we have the minimum free space, and this is a calculation, not a specific size. So Nerdio is going to be watching the volume to manage it for you so that you can always obtain the minimum amount of free space that you set. The same thing happens here on the maximum. Now as we set these numbers on the left, watch the table on the right. This is going to reflect the change to capacity and performance so that you know what you're gonna get. Now the next section here is to schedule the scaling, and this is pretty straightforward. Set your time zone, the days, hours, and minimum volume size that you want auto scale to run, and you can add multiple schedules if you need to. Now the last section in this part is about latency-based scaling. And this is where we look at the performance on NetApp and scale the volume up or down based on the performance. That way you get the numbers you need and you can spot check yourself with the note on the right showing the current latency. Save everything at the bottom and you're good to go. And last but certainly not least, we wanna do the same thing now for our storage scaling on Azure files. Now I have a premium file share already set up here in Nerdio, so go ahead and click the drop down to manage, select auto scale and configure. We've got three sections here as well. First drop down, you can specify what you want to work with, which is either the absolute size or a percentage. And I'll use absolute size here just to make the math a little easier. And just like in NetApp, when you set the performance, we see our table on the right. That'll show us the maximum column here. That's kind of related to your logon storm IO. And then the minimum column, that's your steady state. So doing the math, you take the number of users you have logged in and multiply by 50 IOPS. So I have, for example, 100 users, and 50 times 100 is 5,000. So then I need 1,000 IOPS for steady state. 
So I'll set the minimum number here of my share to be 573 gigabytes. Then I'll set the maximum to 1.2 terabytes. Now, just like before, you can set a ceiling so you don't end up with runaway cost. And just note that the minimum size can never be smaller than the used capacity. Now the table's updated and gives me the exact capacity and performance that I want. Next, let's look at the scaling logic. Now the auto scale trigger uses something called success server latency. And this is the time it takes to process one IOP. Now the increase and decrease settings will go up by percent or gigabyte depending on how you have that quota unit set at the top. And here it shows that we would increase the size by 10 gigabytes if the latency is over 20 milliseconds for five minutes. And then it would decrease by 20 gigabytes if the latency is less than 10 milliseconds for 15 minutes. And to help you know if this is the sweet spot, over on the right of each line, you have the current latency numbers. Now there is one final thing to understand about Azure Premium Files, which is that note at the bottom. In Azure Premium Files, you can only decrease the share quota 24 hours after the last increase. This means that once you increased, you're committed to that cost for 24 hours. So even though you could shrink the share to be smaller anytime you like, the cost won't change until 24 hours. With that in mind, let's look at the second section here where we can pre-stage our scaling with a schedule. This is also a good time to remind you of the best practice to have one FSLogix file share per host pool. This will help keep your shares as small as possible. So over here, if we choose Monday through Friday, the share would scale up on Monday morning and stay that way until Friday night. Then it would scale down to the minimum size that you want. Then you set the size to increase to get the performance numbers that you want. And there's many other ways that Nerdio can help you save money in Azure Virtual Desktop, which is linked right over there. Or you can check out the latest Azure Academy video right up top. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Happy learning.